Noise News UK here at the cockpit in Leeds with Tonight Alive on one of the first nights of their UK tour to promote your new album, or it's new to the UK album, uh, What Are You Scared Of, which came out yesterday, I believe. Yep. Right. Now, I understand that it's been out for quite a while in other parts of the world, though, is that right? Yeah. Uh, it came out, what? It came out in October 2011. Yeah, it came out in February in America, and it's just coming out yesterday in the UK now, so. Is, is it odd coming over here, going to press guys like me? Oh, yeah, this is our new record, which we made forever ago. Yeah, we, we actually made it like two years ago, so. It's just taken a while to get out, but it's, it's, finally, done. it's finally done. But yeah, in relation to that, we've only, this is our second, oh, third tour already? Second, third tour or second time we've been here. Yeah. So it's kind of cool that like it, we timed it well, but yeah. it feels good to just have it out and now we can yeah. you know, play the songs off the album and yeah, it's cool. Can you, can you even remember that much from the recording process when you Big yeah. About. Um, yeah. No, that was our first time in America, so pretty like pretty special time for us. I can remember most of it. We filmed a lot of it as well. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I know this is the third time you've been here, I believe. Uh, uh, here? Yeah, uh, here in the UK. Second time we've been here, third tour, because we came over, we did like two tours in one. Yeah. One run, so yeah. That's cool. And uh, how does touring uh, the UK compare to touring America? So the links between the UK and Australia. I reckon the venues are more professional too. here. Yeah. Like the venues just run better, like the bands get looked after a bit more. Um, I guess the weather's shitter here than America. Yeah. Um, the length of the tours over in America, are, like it's like four or five times the length of the tour here. Yeah. The so. drives are longer. Yeah, but in America it's like you see the same kind of stuff every day, whereas over here like you get Europe and you get like such a like so so many different cultures around there, and then you get to come across the UK. And, yeah, it's good fun. Had you guys been able to see that much of the world before you joined the band? Uh, no, not really. Not at all. A couple of family trips, but nothing, nothing big like this. Was it quite a surreal experience going from within about a year of touring youth centres around Sydney to suddenly you're touring the whole world? Yeah. And and how did that even start to happen? I guess when we came to record the album in America, that was when we first started branching out and getting contacts over there while we were recording, and uh, we hooked up like our first tour. We did that. And once that happened, you know, we just started getting more and more offers for tours um, overseas. We got contacts from the UK, and um, it just kind of snowballed from there. <coughs> like, well, the more we toured, the more press that we got, the more um, that the offers came in for more tours. Yeah. Uh, now the album, obviously, that you have to promote. What are you so scared of? Produced by a fairly legendary punk producer in Mark Trombino, and I've read that he actually produced you to make the record. How did that happen? He, oh, he contacted us. Yeah, yeah. It was he contacted us back in the MySpace days. He just sent us an inbox, and we didn't really like we didn't realize what, what it was at the time. We we're like, holy shit! Um, then we started being in contact with him, and that's how that kind of got together. Like, because we were interested in doing an album, he reached us, um, reached out to us, and asked, and said if uh, if we're ever thinking of doing an album, that he'd love to work with us, and that's how it happened. And did knowing that you'd have this massively successful producer who'd worked with some huge bands that was he was going to record your first album, did that add any more pressure or change how you approach writing the songs? Um, I think we just kept progressing writing the songs as we were, but it definitely brought us many more levels above what we thought we could ever become or do in a studio. We were pushed so hard by him. Um, both in pre-pro and writing and when we were tracking, like everything on the record is really natural. We played every single thing, wasn't really any editing done at all. Um, and that's what we wanted, we wanted a, a really natural process and he was just the right guy for the job, for the album. Um, and at that time it's, it's, pro it's the best thing that we could have come out of. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. And in what way did he push you hard in the studio? Um, by doing 13 or 14 hour days, um, drum tracking, um, really long pre-pro days as well. Um, just, you know, getting parts right. Yeah, um, making sure everything was pretty much perfect. Yeah, we did we did four or five days of pre-pro and it was, yeah, it was from 10 in the morning to 10 at night, which is really long days. And he just really pushed us and so we'd get the best we could. And we could play the best we could. Like we all came back real, like much better musicians than what we went over there. Would you say how hard he pushed you to play in the studio has made you better live musicians as well? Yeah, Absolutely. definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't... 
I didn't really hit a drum as hard as I did when I came back before I went, that's for sure. Probably you guys don't, probably don't like that. Yeah, it's not, not best edition, <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, was it through Mark that the uh, Mark Hoppus ended up putting yeah, some well, yeah. on one of your songs? Yeah, we were looking for someone to collaborate with, someone to get on one of the songs for the record, and we didn't really have any idea of who to get. And Mark was just like, "Oh, I know, I know Mark." <coughs> an email, and he, he did. I got in touch with him, and Mark was like, "I love the track. I love to do it." So just kind of went from there. Presumably Blink were a band that you kind of grew up listening to, was it? No. Uh, no? <laughs> yeah, it was. We all love Blink. I think I everyone listened to Blink. Yeah, yeah. Major inspiration for us. Like, when we were starting out, yeah, so. Was it, was it surreal to have that finished track with him oh, on? Oh, fuck yeah. It still is. Yeah. yeah. It was insane. Like, yeah, every time we hear it, like, we heard it the other day um, at one of our signings, they played it, and I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool to hear. And. Um, Obviously, recently you spent the summer on the Warp Tour in America. How was that experience? And did you make any new friends and new contacts over there? Yeah, we definitely did. Um, it was it was an incredible experience. We've all always wanted to do it, even just growing up, being like 15 on YouTube, checking out other videos, wanting to do it. Like that's pretty much like why we started a band was to do tours like that. Um, but yeah, we definitely made some friends as well. Um, the guys from Umi at Six and uh, We're the Ocean definitely got along with them. But like this whole Team Commonwealth kind of. Yeah. yeah, thing going on. It was uh, yeah, they were great dudes. And Twin Atlantic. And Twin Atlantic. Can't yeah. Get them. Yeah. So we seem to make much better friends with British fans. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the shared. <laughs> yeah. It's the shared worship of the Queen, or but, something. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> definitely. Maybe I don't know. Well, I don't know. If we Love that old there, bird. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, did you get to hear much of those, uh, particularly Twin and We Are The Ocean's new records? I know the We Are The Ocean's record came out last week. Yeah, it's great, man. We love those guys. Yeah, they're awesome band, really nice dudes. And, yeah, and great bands as well. Ah, that's cool. Now, I know the, the first time you came up here you were touring with Young Guns, some yeah. of the nicest dudes in uh, British rock. Did they, uh, did they show you around the country well? They did, indeed. And then um, we also had them over to tour the Australia with us. And then we both went to Japan together, so I'd say we're, I'd say we're pretty good friends. I yeah, don't, I, don't, say, but I don't reckon there's been a band that we've gotten on with better than them. Definitely, They're just really great dudes. Yeah. So definitely had some good times. Yeah. I just want to talk a little bit about the Australian music scene because I, I wouldn't say Australia was necessarily a country known for punk rock or pop punk or anything like that. What What was the scene like that you guys eventually broke out of? Well, there were there was a lot of punk rock and pop punk when we were growing up. When we were younger, like the bands like Kiss Chasey and before that, like Body Jar and One Dollar Short and stuff like that. But the scene that we came out of out of was a very like scene scene. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, when hardcore metal stuff. Very hardcore. A lot, a lot of hardcore, a lot of metal um, stuff like that. Like the first shows we, we were doing were a lot of metal shows and hardcore shows, and we just had to keep doing them. And uh, we eventually like broke out of it we ended up getting like enough of our own fans to be able to warrant like a main support slot on another show and then we were able to tour with international bands that were much more um of our genre yeah. are there any um other australian bands that maybe you're friends with other you like that you hope will kind of follow you to make that next step internationally sure well there's a band called getaway plan who are over here at the moment as well just they think they might have just finished a run with pierce Avail. They're a great band. Um, Amity Fiction as well have been over here a couple of times. They're really big in Australia. Um, who else is? There's there's a handful of bands from Australia, but it's a very it's a hard scene to break out of. Yeah. Australia, cause, cause it's it's so removed from everywhere else, but it's also really really expensive to travel anywhere. Yeah. Um, mm. overseas. And there's only a handful of bands that have been able to do that um, for a couple of tours, but it just depends on the test of time, I guess. Yeah. And because Australia is such a big place and there's not really that many markets in it, it's actually really hard to also tour inside Australia, just because there's so much travel time between each, each show and you can only hit like probably like five major markets and then you have to wait like another two or three months to tour again, otherwise you just saturate it and like no one will stop, like people stop coming to your shows. Yeah. So we've seen it all before. But in saying that, there is a good little scene in Australia. Yeah. Little, good little scene. Yeah. <laughs> um, how much would you say the, the growth of the um, Soundwave 
Yeah. Festival in uh, Australia, how much has that benefited Australian rock music? With oh, like, gosh, massive. Yeah. Yeah. We got to play the Soundwave for the, uh, this year, and it was the first time that there was ever four Australian bands on the field. And like, it, we played really great shows out of that, um, that's for sure. But I mean, I wouldn't really say there's so many other bands, and I wouldn't say it really benefits the scene very much. No, not at all. Because it's literally just they're bringing American bands over to play, yeah. and like, yeah. Local oh, bands, yeah. Well, for sure. band, rather, bands like getting really good deal with Soundwave and be able to come and play a massive festival and no bands really come out on their own anymore which means no Australian bands can support That's them close. they're not given the opportunity to be able to progress any further yeah it definitely helped us out a lot like we're not ungrateful for that at all it's just like there are so many other bands that would never get the opportunity to do that and are losing yeah possible opportunities to uh, be a support act for them like we, they came out later on yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Um, just to go back to the, the album a little bit, what did cover, uh, some quite distinctive cover art, where did that picture come from and who chose it? Yeah, Jenna's like a big fan of um, Audrey Kawasaki, who does that sort of um, style artwork, and she was, um, I can't actually remember the guy who um, did the artwork for us now, but yeah, we reached out to him because he did a, a similar style, but obviously like a, a lot cheaper because Audrey's work's very expensive. So yeah, we gave him a couple of references and he, um, he did that for us and we were like, really happy with how it turned out. So obviously, to work this new record for you, it, like we said, it, it's an old record. Have you already started work on something new, some yeah. more material, yeah. is it? We, uh, we head over to the States after this tour, and then from the States we go back home to Australia and start work on the, on the next record, which we'll be recording over December, January sort of time. Hopefully we put it out mid-2013, yeah. Do you intend to record it back home in Australia, or are you going to go yeah. back to the US? Yeah, back home in Australia. Working with Australian producers, or...? Yeah, I don't know if we haven't announced any of that yet, so I'm not sure if we can go into it. But yeah, we're going to do it in Australia yeah. with someone at home and try and have a more organic kind of chilled out um, second <coughs> without the pressures of having to fly overseas again. Mm -hmm. And what what do you anticipate, what effect do you anticipate that will have on the songwriting that's been in your own surroundings? I think it would be positive for sure, because since, since we did the last album, we've grown a lot, we've taught a lot, you know, um, we understand each other a lot more, and I think um, all the touring as well that we've done, Going away again to record is just gonna, is not gonna benefit us because. But being at home is gonna be relaxing for us as well as productive. Mm. So um, I think it's gonna be positive. And uh, just to talk a little bit about the current tour. How have you found the dates you've played so far, and who have you brought on the road with you? Pardon, sorry. How have you found the dates you've played on this tour so far, and who is it that's who you brought on the road with you? Oh yeah, we, we we've done um, Europe so far, and it was freaking awesome. We uh, we got lost alone on tour with us. Do you know them by any chance? Yeah. They're, um, oh man, they're awesome band, like really nice dudes. Um, they're a three piece and um, yeah, they just have really great music, like great musicians. And um, Blitz Kids have just joined us today, but we haven't um, been able to watch them live yet, but I'm sure yeah. they're really nice guys. We've heard some things about them too. Apparently <laughs> 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 they're rubbish. <laughs> well, I, I guess yeah. uh, the, the kids at the shows can probably judge that for themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, we've, like, a couple of kids have come to shows in Europe and said that Blitz Kids are a great band, and, you know, so. Should we go to it? Yeah. Um, start to bring things to a close, just so you can get, get on with your, your evening and get ready for the show. Yeah. Um, after breaking out of Australia, touring the world and recording a record with one of the biggest name computers ever, um, what is there left for Tonight Alive to be scared of? <laughs> That's good question. that we can't say answer that though. Yeah. No, nothing really. Nothing. It's the whole <laughs> like, yeah. I mean... Really. We're just excited to be to be able to keep touring. We've yeah. already got tours ready for next year, and to be able to even get to a second album, like we think, is a massive achievement in itself. So I don't think. I guess we could be really scared if the world ended. Anything. Yeah, this yeah, year because then we wouldn't get to do it. Yeah, it's twenty twelve. I don't mm. think we really believe any of that. Yeah. Do we? <laughs> no. That, that would be a bummer though if you finished writing the record and the yeah, world, yeah, yeah. world like all the Man, this is the best record we've ever done! Suck. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Yeah, that'll suck. Yeah, yeah on that uh, apocalyptic note, yeah. probably a good, yeah. good place to bring this to an end. Uh, yeah. Noise News UK with Tonight Alive. Best of luck with the UK release of the record and the rest of the tour. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, mate.